I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Now, we, are, we have been talking about teach us to pray. And that's because the Lord has said this month is a month of prayer. And we've looked at different aspects of prayer. And this week, we are looking at something quite different, but in line with prayer and understanding how to pray. So yesterday, I shared with you, on Jonah, how Jonah was in a life and death situation. In fact, that's not even a life and that's a death situation for his God. Now that worked out because of his disobedience to God. But I told you something yesterday, Jonah understood exactly what he was doing, praise God. So he wasn't just taking a careless decision. He was taking a careful decision based on his understanding with the Lord, even though he didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. And he had his reasons. Now, today we're going to be looking at um, something else in terms of the kind of the, the things we pray for and how we pray for them. Praise God. Now, let's before we do that, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Release your faith right now to receive. Say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus remember our team scripture jesus taught them a parable to let them understand that men ought always to pray and not to faint men ought always to pray and not to faint now we we saw yesterday jonah's situation and how he prayed and though he was in that death situation, God spoke and the fish that swallowed him vomited him in, uh, on the dry land. Now today we're going to be looking at Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4 and verse... Now you know the story of Esther. You know how um, Mordecai raised Esther up and she, the king got... You know how the king... Uh, sent out his, his former wife and then now esther now became the queen and then the there was a man named haman that was determined to exterminate all the jews and he had mapped out his plan carefully mapped out his plan put it in the law got the king to sign the decree that all jews should be exterminated on a certain day imagine that kind of a thing and all these things were going on and Mordecai became aware and then he told Esther about it. Now, I want to show you something Esther did here in chapter 4. Now, Mordecai had gone to look, Esther, this is what's going on. Esther was like, hey, I can't. Then Mordecai sent a strong word to them. And let me read from verse 12. Okay, from verse 12 is good. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, because she was a queen, hey, there's trouble. They want to exterminate the Jews. And she was like, you know, you know when you come to this kind of, you know how those things are. Have you, have you ever dealt with, uh, you know how someone had promised you something like, look, when we get there, we'll change things. When we get there, you know, maybe even personal. Ah, don't worry. When I, you know, you know, sometimes people have all this idea when someone is traveling abroad and you just feel that the moment you go there, you see money on trees, you begin to plug and send home. You know, people have those kind of mentalities. So someone just travels like, whoa, praise God. All our family problems are over. And then the person goes, like, you're expecting one day, two days, this person called up, all right, wow, praise God, praise God. So, so what's happening? Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll start working. And then, and the next thing, uh, one week, two weeks, one month, how, what's going on now? The person say, you know, when you come here, the way, the way it is, it's not like in Nigeria. You understand that kind of stories? Same thing with government officials. You're praying for someone to get into office. Like, look, 
we'll change things. We'll, yes, we'll change things. And then the person gets into the office. And then how far, what, when? You know, we have to understand what is, what is going on first. It's not the way, you understand it. So, you know, like Esther was telling Monica these kind of things, you know, like, you know, the way it is. And Monica said, hey, listen, don't think that you will escape because you are queen. The whole process is to eliminate all the Jews so they will remember that you're a Jew and they will kill you. Now, that's what woke Esther up. Like, okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need people like that in our lives who will remind you of where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes people just need to be reminded where they are coming from. Mordecai had to remind Esther, remember you are a Jew, madam. Remember you are a Jew, madam first lady. <laughs> you are a Jew. So all they need to do is to recognize that this one is a Jew also and you're gone. Now look at what Esther did. Then verse 15, then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. Now take note, fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night and days. So like three days dry fast, morning and night. It's not the one you break in by 6 p.m. in the evening. Morning and night, no fasting, no, no eating, no drinking water. That's what she demanded. And then, thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch this now. I also and my maiden will fast likewise. So me too, I'll do three days dry and my maiden. Now, I don't believe this is the first time Esther was in dry fasting. You see? Now, remember, she was raised by Mordecai. And then he must have raised her up properly. Now, because he raised her properly, it was easy for him to activate her. Understand what I mean when I use that word? And that's the truth. It was easy for him to activate her when the time was needed the most. And Mordecai was not doing this for any selfish reason. He was doing it to save his people. And then look at what he said to Esther. He says, remember, it may just be that this is the reason God brought you into the kingdom at this time. So that was what activated Esther, like, hey, let me just, not just live and then forget why I'm here. I'm not here to enjoy all the glamour. I'm here to fix the problem. And that's the same thing God's children need to understand. Now, this goes to everyone who is in one political office or the other. And then you become lukewarm. Many times they don't know what to do. And other times they were not even raised properly by, by the, the, the pastor, the leader who raised them. And you know, sometimes also people just feel the moment my member gets into political office, ah, it's money time, you should bring all the money, you know? No, it's not about money. There is a purpose, there's something that needs to change. We need to create a better society. We need to save people, we need to save lives. Now that's what Mordecai was expecting Esther to do. Hey, your people are going to die if you don't act. Now look at what Esther says. says, I also and my maiden will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. She recognized that, look, I'm not supposed, according to the law, I'm not supposed to appear before the king. So I want to do something that is against the law because this matter needs urgency. I need to see the king by myself. I can't write a note. I can't say, no, I need to see the king by myself. So, hey, you guys fast for me. I also will fast. You don't tell people to fast for you. You're there lounging, eating and drinking. And then on the third day, you now want to, hey, uh, pastor, uh, what did the Lord say when you were fasting? Oh, God said he has given us the victory. Oh, so I can go? Yes, you can go. You may go and you will die. It's you that will die. Esther said, me too and my maids. Now, because she, now this is a situation where you see trouble coming. The trouble hasn't come yet. Jonah's case, the trouble was there already. He was in the trouble. So he cried until, remember what I told you yesterday, he had to look for something to hope on. Now, in this situation, you can see trouble is coming in a few weeks time. Trouble is coming in a few days time. Trouble is coming in a few months time, okay? You can see it. And this trouble will require 
you doing something that is against the law or that is against the pattern. And doing that may put your life at risk. It may end your job. I mean, it may, it may get, you may get fired for it. You may get fired, you may get ostracized for it. But you look at it and look, the only way this thing will happen is for me to go say this thing to this person. Or for me to take this decision. And that decision may cost me. So what did Esther says? You fast for me. I will fast. Also those around me will fast. Why? Because you don't want Satan to get any way into your arena, into your space. Because you're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death right now. That's what you're going to do. So at the end of this fast, you will walk through that valley. And why was it important for Esther to fast by herself? Because she is the one. Mordecai will not tell her when you get to the king, say this, say this, say this. No. She is the one that will receive words to speak. And if she's got to receive words, then she's got to be consecrated. So that's why it's important she herself fast. Because you're going to take this decision. And in taking that decision, you will own that decision. You're not going to say, it's, it's my pastor that told me to do it like this. So that's why. No, you can't say that. And no pastor should even say that. You by yourself will hear the voice of God from heaven. And with boldness. How do you think Esther got the wisdom on how to handle the king? You know what she did? She went before the king. The king gave her. You know, she already knew that this is against the law. And she said, if I perish, I perish. Now, now what was she, what did she mean by if I perish, I perish? She meant after these three days fast, I'm going to take that decision. If I die, it means God is not with us. So forget it. Every Jew should find themselves, find whatever they need to do to save themselves. That's what she meant. But if God grants me favor, then it means his hand is upon us Jews. A lot of times people are afraid of this exact step. You know, you sense that, look, I can help, but it's going to cost me something. What do I do? Pray. 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 And this kind of prayer requires fasting. You don't just say, and, and, and truly, three days is enough. You don't go into seven days. No, you don't. Three days is enough. If you want to change policies, if you want to change actions, if you want to change certain things, and you have the point man to you. So this is not a situation whereby they all gathered in one place and they were praying for God to touch the heart of the king. And God should, somebody have to bring this information to the king. And the person has to bring, you know, so dealing with king sometimes, you know, if, if God have ever helped you to be in that arena, you have to be careful how you communicate because sometimes even though what you're saying is true and you communicate it, it will be thrown out. I mean, because the king can just say, mm, Pastor, but who's telling you all these things? You know, some people are not just truthful. Yes, because the king will realize that he's surrounded by lots of liars. So even you that he's supposed to be bringing the truth, he would start thinking that people are trying to use you to get at him. He becomes careful with you also. So these things, you don't just say, oh, he's my, he's my son, spiritual son. He's my member. I can tell him what to do. This doesn't always work that way. See, there is an anointing on that seat of authority. Many people don't understand this. There is an anointing on that seat of authority. And when you want to deal with, if you make the mistake of dealing with the person, as I know this person, you'll be making great mistakes. Now, that's why you have people who, they, they, they have siblings, even siblings, they have relatives in government, positioned to be of great help to them, but they do nothing. And they go, brother, um, you, you know, you're supposed to say you help me, or you're supposed to give me a job, you're supposed to give me a contract, you're supposed to give me something. And they say, mm, yes, 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 I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Before you know what's happening, their time has elapsed or they've been removed from office. And then they will now come out and say, ah! I had the opportunity to help you. Why didn't I even do it? You think, and then you'll be going, can you imagine my brother? He got there and he changed. 
<laughs> there is no way he will not change. They will change. Why did they change? Because there is an anointing on that seat. And if the handler doesn't prepare himself well for that seat, the seat will swallow him. I'm telling people in government, yes, especially high level of governance. There is an anointing on that seat, anointing from the Lord. Yes, every, every seat carries an anointing. If the person who is, I pray you understand what I'm sharing with you. If the person who's going to sit on that seat doesn't prepare himself spiritually for that seat, the seat will swallow him. And you see the person starts dancing, dancing here and there. The people you're supposed to listen to, he will not listen to them. Guess the people he will now be listening to, people who have spent time preparing themselves for that seat. Not that they will be in charge, but they prepare themselves spiritually. Now, whether, and most times, most times, you find people who prepare more with demon spirits than with the Holy Spirit. Christians are so careless when it comes to this you think because he's your member ah my member is now the governor ah, anything i tell him he will do you will tell him you tell him oh pastor that's nice that's very true that's very so I, I i'll handle it pastor don't worry i will handle it now what he's supposed to handle is something for the community and then he's jogging he's jogging and then the next time you go say pastor ah, pastor you know we're working on something it's not like i forgot to I didn't forget working on some pastor. In fact, take this, you know, take this for the church and take this for your family. And I, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You will be shocked. That's how he'll be giving you change until his time will elapse. The main purpose for him getting there will not happen. Meanwhile, you will notice that unbelievers got projects to themselves and you didn't get any. And then you know, ask like, what, what rubbish? What is wrong with this, my member? He got in there, he was favorably unbeliever. Even names I gave him from the church to give appointment to. He kept saying he will, he will look into it, he will look. Do you, why unbelie Do you know what's going on? You didn't prepare him well for that seat. So he got into the seat. The people who prepared themselves for that area took charge over his life. And you are thinking by relationship, you will no, you need to get see, you need to get into fasting. You want to bring an important matter before the it doesn't matter whether it's your relative. You see that seat, you need to overcome the power, or you need to bring yourself in tandem with the with the with the spirits that be on that seat. <laughs> How do you do it? Fasting does it. Fast. Esther was not going to relate with the king as her husband. She's going to relate with the king as the king. And for her to approach there, that's why she said, look, it's not, a, it's not according to the law. So it might consume my life. How can you say going to see your husband will consume your life? What kind of thing is that? Can't you see that you're his wife? Uh, 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 uh. When he sits on that throne as king, he has no wife. I'm telling you the truth. He has no wife. That's why the first king, the first queen was removed in the first place. Because in his place of authority, he gave a command and she was looking at it that this my husband has come again. This man, she did not understand that that's not her husband. She did not know that that's the king she was dealing with. And it cost her her, her seat. Be careful with this thing. Esther was smarter. Esther didn't say, pray for me. I will go. She said, pray for me. Me too. I will pray. And then on the after three days, I will step into that place. And whatever happens, let it be a sign from heaven of God's direction. And she went in there and you know the story. Even the wisdom by which she communicated her, what she wanted to the king. You see how God, it was God that gave her that wisdom. Don't ask the first thing. Tell him to come for dinner. He came for the dinner. Don't ask him. Tell him to come again and tell him to be coming with him because God wanted, I call me. You don't know what fasting and prayer will do for you. You want to approach that person in authority? Go and fast. Give yourself three days. Dry fast. Dry fast. You have someone in authority that you, you want to bring a request. You want to bring a proposal to. And, and you, you, maybe you've tried it before. They're like, okay, okay, okay. Go on a three days dry. 
Marco Baratakaya. After that dry, go to that person again. You see a difference. Praise God. My time is up. Ah, letoba nefen nekru to me nabina. I've just shared a secret with you. Apply it and you see the difference. This can affect a whole nation. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.